Now, the second issue and the focus of our round is carbon pricing. And um, I was advised to make reference briefly on the business leadership criteria on carbon pricing and also the newly launched executive guide to carbon pricing leadership by caring for climate together with WRI, PRI, the Climate Group, CDP, the UN Foundation, and the World Bank Group as part of a carbon pricing leadership coalition. Our next round is meant to address this question of what price level does business support for governments to achieve their intended nationally determined contributions? Is there a price range that you consider to be realistic? Is it 25 to 50, 50 to 100, more than 100? Or is that the wrong question to ask? But as you also said just now, why is it that carbon pricing is proving to be such a challenge? Because virtually every economist will tell you that this would be the most direct and efficient way in which to make that transition possible. And yet economics is not everything. Politics often can be far more important and we know how much a few cents at the petrol pump can disturb politicians. I will open the floor uh, in a moment to a number of contributors and would also invite those of you who would like to take the floor to simply raise your flag. I would probably need binoculars to be able to read the names, but I'm sure my colleagues will assist me. I have a couple of names that have been given to me already of colleagues who will address us in the beginning of this debate. And um, I would like to begin by turning to our President of the General Assembly, uh, Mr. Morgens Likitov, who is to my left, and to invite him to address this afternoon's session. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Hakim. Excellent distinguished guests. Uh, let me, first of all, congratulate Global Compact and its new director, Lisa Kingo, here at my side for having so successfully organized the business segment of COP21. I'm sure that this Paris COP will be remembered as the action and business COP, where the economic necessity and benefits of climate action finally became very, very evident. I'm also very encouraged by the many great examples we also have heard over the past hour demonstrate the potential and necessity of collective action by business alone or business with governments and other actors uh, as well if we are to keep temperatures below the two degrees Celsius and hopefully down to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Actions for business on carbon pricing, on sustainable consumption and production, and global standards on energy efficiency and renewables, to mention a few, will be greatly help to build the baseline of COP21. They can also, however, help drive rapid implementation of the broader 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. After the dust settles in Paris this week. It will be essential to build on the momentum generated here and as President of the General Assembly, I will do everything possible in re this regard. 2016 must become the year of investments and implementation. Therefore, on the 11th of 12th of April, I will hold a major event, event to kickstart implementation of the major agreements of 2015. When this COP is over, the world community will, through Addis to New York and now to Paris, have completed the agreement on the global goals for the next many years. In 2016, we need to focus even more on how to achieve these goals. We must kickstart the conversation about SDGs, including climate change, and not at least its financing and the framework of regulatory character and of taxation that can make it possible. First, I will ask governments to present their initial steps to implement the Sustainable Development Goals. This, could also include the, the, this should also include the 
INDCs. And if helpful, uh, we could aim to organize a conversation about capacity building and policy advice for developing countries in particular. Second, we will invite, uh, we will invite in the most progressive forces of government, business and investors and civil society, including, of course, you who are here today, for conversations about how to catalyze some of the most important means of implementation. Technology and energy information and communication about it and financing in all its aspects, but most urgently uh, of sustainable, resilient and climate smart infrastructure and, of course, multi-stakeholder partnerships and action. Finally, we will aim to create synergy between the action on climate and the action on SDGs in general. Also, thereby, help to strengthen the business case for action. I am convinced that by bringing together all these agendas uh, from this now soon past year, bringing them together, we can help ensure that the implementation becomes mutually reinforcing. And that for business, your engagement with the UN becomes a one-stop shop. A one-stop shop. This week, however, we must unite to reach the needed, very ambitious agreement. I thank you for the opportunity to make these remarks, and I look forward to your cooperation in a coming year of early and forceful implementation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President of the General Assembly.